Hey, it's Peter. Today I'm going to map a MIDI controller to a clip slot in Ableton Live. I do this when I'm on stage and I want to trigger a clip without using the mouse and looking at the computer screen to, to do it. Uh, first, let me thank uh, eross21 on YouTube for requesting this video. I'm going to assume that you have Ableton. I'm using version 11, but this is going to be the same for any version of Ableton that you have. I'm going to assume that you have some kind of MIDI controller, like a keyboard, what I'm using today, or if you have like a drum pad thing with drum pads, some kind of controller, and that you have it connected and working. And I'm going to assume that you know how to get into the uh, session view here in Ableton and drag clips into clip slots and start and stop them. Uh, in fact, let's just see what I have here. Let's just test that. I have a drum track with some, a clip called Light Beat. This is a, uh, a MIDI clip that I'm using in this track. And um, I'm using a, a drum library from Red Pack Drums called uh, DS Drum Essentials. And I should be able to click on the triangle and hear this beat. It's a two measure beat. And of course, if I click the stop button for that track down here, it stops. So I can start it and stop it using a mouse, obviously. Um, oh, and I should just mention that I have this set up in that way that it's uh, quantized to the beat so that when I start, it starts on the next downbeat of the measure. And when I stop, it does the same thing. It resolves to the beginning of the next measure. That's what you're seeing and hearing now. Um, I have an audio track set up, and this contains a sample from Ableton's core library. It's this little melodic thing. And of course, if I click the little square stop button, it'll stop on the next downbeat. So that's how things work normally when you're using a mouse, but you may want to use a controller sometimes, especially if you're on stage. There's a setting you should check out first. So go to Live Settings, or if you like shortcuts, it's on a Mac, Command, Comma, or on a PC, Control, Comma. Then you get to this Preferences window. There's a bunch of tabs on the left side. You're looking for the MIDI tab. And then you're looking for this list at the bottom, which should show controllers that are connected to your system. Yours is going to look different than mine. These are the keyboards and controllers that are connected here to my system, including this one keyboard, Keystation 61 Mach 3. There's a column, the third column over there says remote, and you need to have that checked for the controller that you want to use for this. So I'm checking it for that keyboard. I'm going to close this now. Make sure your browser is showing over here on the left side of your screen. This is going to be handy. There's a triangle up at the top left of Ableton that flips the browser open. Um, or if you like shortcuts, on a Mac, Command Option B toggles the browser, uh, which on Windows is Control Option B. Now you need to go into MIDI mapping mode to connect that controller to the clip slot. There's a button there that says MIDI or Command M or Control M will take you to this. Now everything sort of turns blue and it highlights all the little features that so that you could click on them and connect them to a controller. The browser is now empty because there it's going to show MIDI mappings that you create in a moment, but it has none now to start with. So I'm going to click on that drum beat clip, which is in the first track, the MIDI track, the drums track. I've clicked on it to select it, and I'm just going to play a note, a C, on my MIDI keyboard. And you can see that it registered that by showing what note it is right there in the clip. Also, in the browser, now you see a mapping. It says note C4, one drums, slot one. The stop button for this track is down here. It's this little square. I'm going to select that next, and I'm going to click C sharp on my keyboard. Now I have another mapping, one to stop that clip whenever I feel like it. And let's go ahead and map controllers up to this other clip, the audio clip that's melodic. So again, I'm going to click on the clip slot. I'm going to play a D this time on my keyboard. 
I see that it's mapped it there. I see that it's in the browser. It's a mapping. And for the stop button of that track, I'll click on it. And then I'm going to hit the D sharp. So I've made four mappings, uh, two for each clip, a way to start it and a way to stop it. And I can leave uh, MIDI mapping mode either by clicking on the MIDI button or Command or Control M again. Okay, having said all that, now this keyboard should serve as a way to launch things without having to touch the mouse. So I'm gonna play that C and I hear the drum beat. If I play the C sharp, it'll stop at the downbeat of the next measure. Same with the little melodic one, now, which is now mapped to the note D. And I can stop it with the D sharp. Of course, they both play together. I got a nice little, a little beat happening. All right, so that's one way to use this whole thing. Here's a slightly different approach. Rather than having one key to start a clip and another key to stop it, you could set this up such that one key starts it and the same key stops it just by using the toggle mode of launch on each clip. So the way you get to that is you select the clip and enter the edit mode of the clip. You can double click on it is one way to get there. And if you look over here on the left, there is a launch section with a little triangle to fold down the launch section. Most of the time we're using trigger. That's what we've been using all along here as the launch method. But you could switch that to toggle. And it changes it so that, so that hitting play on the clip starts it and then hitting play again stops it. It's a toggle mode. And we can do the same thing for, for the audio clip too. If I select it and navigate to the launch section here, changing this from trigger to toggle. This is just a different way to approach the same idea. So I don't need a separate key to, to, to stop it. I'll use the same key to, to stop it. Here's the drum beat. Now I'll just push the same key again. And same thing with the melodic one. Same key to stop it. All right, thanks again to eros21 for requesting this video. In conclusion, you map a controller to a clip slot when you want to use it on stage or in any situation where you don't want to have to use the mouse and look at the screen to launch it. You have to make sure in settings that you've enabled that controller as a remote control, and then you use the MIDI mapping mode to make the assignment. All right, have an awesome day.